Okay, welcome back to the second part of my talk. So now we have to spend a few words about almost abelian groups and why we study structures on them. First of all, and this is the case for all the groups, not just almost abelian groups, one usually study left invariant geometric structures on the groups, so structures which are invariant under left translations. This implies that the structure descends to a structure on the algebra on the group, and this makes the problem uh, uh, easier to study. We said the Lali group is almost abelian if it um, admits an abelian normal cell group of co-dimension 1, or equivalently if uh, its Lie algebra admits an abelian ideal of co-dimension 1. Um, we notice that um, uh, being almost abelian uh, implies being solvable, since the commutator ideal is contained in N, so it is in particular uh, abelian and so nilpotent. Uh, one fact that makes almost abelian Lie groups easier to study is that the, the whole Lie algebra structure is determined by the adjoint action of, uh, of just a single vector. Uh, one can pick uh, uh, any vector which is transverse to the abelian ideal. And this implies that the, that the Lie algebra G uh, is isomorphic to the semi-direct product of R and uh, R to the uh, N minus 1, where we are assuming N to be the dimension of G, and B is a, um, and in this case, B is an endomorphism of R uh, N minus 1. Okay, now assume JG to be a left invariant remission structure on the almost abelian the, the group G. Uh, assume that uh, the real dimension of G is 2N. The one is free to consider a basis E1 to E2N of the Lie algebra G such that first it is orthonormal. Then the first two n minus one vectors span the abelian ideal n so that the orthogonal complement of n is exactly the span of E2N. The one can assume that E1 is mapped by J into E2N so that uh, the vectors going from E2 to uh, E to n minus 1 span the space n intersected with Jn. For simplicity, one can also assume that J behaves in this way. Then, Laurette uh, and Rodriguez Valencia in 2013 proved that uh, the adjoint action of E to n, which is transverse to the abelian ideal, when it is uh, restricted to the abelian ideal behaves in this way. So we have three pieces of algebraic data. So we have a real number, a vector v, and an endomorphism of n1, which is this space over here. Uh, this uh, cannot uh, just be any endomorphism, but it has to be, in particular, an endomorphism which commits with j. So in this context, one can study special emission structures on anonymous abelian Lie groups. Uh, by imposing further requirements uh, on the algebraic data A, V, and B, A. For example, the Keller condition was studied by Laurette and Rodriguez Valencia. The SKT condition was studied by Arroyo and La Fuente, and I just recall that the SKT condition is another generalization of the Keller condition, which uh, is characterized by the fact that the fundamental form is bar closed. And then uh, Andrada and Orilla studied the locally conformally Keller condition. Uh, which can be characterized by saying that uh, the omega is equal to alpha with omega, where alpha is a closed one form. Uh, in our paper, we proved that uh, our emission structure on almost a binary group is balanced if and only if, in this context, V vanishes and A is traceless. So using this, one can uh, classify almost a binary algebra admitting a balanced emission structure. We focused in dimension 6, where uh, all the results uh, of classification were known. For nilpotent Lie algebras, the classification was obtained by Ugarte. For solvable unimodular Lie algebras with holomorphically trivial canonical bundle, uh, this was obtained by Fino Tari Ugarte. And uh, in, a, in an earlier paper uh, with Anna Fino, we classified uh, Kähler almost abelian Lie algebras in dimension 6. So, the classification theorem in the balanced case uh, is this one. We have nine, we have nine classes of, um, of almost abelian Lie algebra, some of which depend continuously on some parameters. And then the notation we are using uh, is um, 
the one for which we are denoting uh, Isley algebra by its structure equations, so that uh, we say, for example, that this uh, algebra admits uh, a coframe E1 E6 uh, whose differentials uh, are given by the entries of this vector. So now I'll present the results we have obtained about the behavior of the balance flow in the almost abelian setting. A general fact about this kind of geometric flow is that left invariant initial data yield left invariant solutions, which are unique in the class of left invariant solutions. The idea behind the bracket flow of Laurette is, uh, is the following. For simplicity, consider an evolution equation for a Riemannian metric. And the idea is not to focus on the evolution of the Riemannian metric, but on the evolution of uh, the brackets of an adapted basis uh, at each time. To formalize this, choose a linear emission structure on R2n and fix a basis uh, of, of the Lie algebra G, which, I, which, which allows to identify the Lie algebra with the complex structure and the initial metric with this model. In this basis, uh, the metric will evolve uh, in this way where C is a family of, uh, of automorphisms uh, of automorphisms of R2n uh, commuting with uh, with uh, J0. And uh, we can uh, regard H here as a change of basis so that uh, when we apply this change of basis the metric will remain untouched but the bracket will change in this way. So here I have just uh, rewritten the equation for the balance flow introduced by Benoni and Bezzoni. In the almost abelian case, we studied the bracket flow, and we we, we showed that that um, that if we start from an almost abelian Lie bracket, then the solution of the bracket flow will remain almost abelian for all times. Uh, and uh, so we can write the evolution equation in terms of the evolution equations of the algebraic data. And this will be given uh, by uh, this equation, by the system of equations, uh, where little p and big p are fourth order polynomials in A and big A, uh, whose precise expression we, we write uh, uh, in the paper. And so the theorem we, we obtain is that if we have a six-dimensional almost abelian Lie group with endowed with a left invariant complex structure, and we assume omega zero to be a left invariant balance metric, then uh, omega zero is a stationary solution of the balance flow if and only if it is scalar. Uh, then we prove that the solution of the balance flow is defined uh, is defined for all times, and uh, then we have a Chigger chrome of convergence to a scalar almost abelian Lie group when t goes to infinity. Another thing we analyze is the concept of self-similar solutions, namely uh, solutions which behave like this so that they differ from the initial data only by time-dependent scalings uh, and pullbacks by diffeomorphisms. And using this, we, we, we get a definition of semi-algebraic balanced soliton only groups. So here I've just written again Equation of the anomaly form in the case of flat bundle. Analogously to what we uh, have proved for balance structure, we proved that uh, um, our emission structure on an almost abelian Lie algebra is balanced with complex structure admitting holomorphic uh, 3 0 forms. Uh, if and only if A vanishes, B vanishes, and both A and JAS are traceless. The question we had was, is the, the anomaly flow well defined for every emission connection now Blatau in the Godushan line? As, uh, as I said earlier, this is not always the case. It is true in general only for the charm connection. But in this uh, almost abelian setting, uh, it is actually true for every emission uh, connection in the Godushan line. We proved exactly that when uh, uh, emission structure and almost abelian algebra is balanced that meets a holomorphic 3 0 form, which is the case we're interested in for the anomaly flow. Then the trace term appearing uh, in, in the right hand side is always of type 2 2. And we also obtain a precise formula for it in terms of uh, tau and a, which is the only surviving piece of algebraic data. And so we obtain exactly this so that if we have an almost abelian group 
with a left invariant uh, complex structure admitting a holomorphic 3 0 form, and uh, we assume omega 0 to be a left invariant balance metric. Then the anomaly flow is well defined for every tau, and uh, the solution will remain balanced for all t. So originally the anomaly flow makes sense in a balanced setting, but uh, one is free to try and study it for other types of emission metrics as well. Now, uh, what we proved is the following. If we have an almost abelianly algebra and uh, with a remission structure, which is locally conformally Kähler and admits a holomorphic 3 0 form, uh, then the two terms appearing on the right hand side of the anomaly flow vanish. Okay, so in particular, we have that the remission structure uh, is strong Kähler recursion. And so this immediately um, gives the following result. So if we have an almost abelian uh, Lie group with a left invariant uh, complex structure admitting a holomorphic 3-0 form, and omega-0 is a left invariant locally conformally Kähler metric, then omega-0 is a stationary solution of the anomaly flow for every choice of tau and alpha. So this concludes my talk. I'll just leave it with some references and further readings about the topics I've talked about. So there are some references about the balance flow, the anomaly flow, about the Strominger system and about emission structure and almost being only groups. So I hope you um, found my talk interesting and uh, I hope to meet you at the Q&A session for this event.